excited about this uh, webinar because Oscar uh, was telling me about his trip to Japan. Matter of fact, you see a picture on the screen here of a team of those from the TWI Institute uh, who went to Japan and met with Mr. Kato, uh, one of the well-known uh, former Toyota managers who has a lot of standard work experience. So I'm very much looking forward to hearing more about what they learned during this time. So Oscar, with that said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Good on you. Thank you, Dwayne. And thanks again for the opportunity to um, share <clears throat> through your company what, we've, um, what we're learning along the way, in this case regarding uh, standardized work. So you will notice everybody, and, and thank you all those who are attending, thanks for giving me your time this half an hour this morning. I always appreciate that um, when people make that decision. Um, as you'll see from the title, and it was advertised as an introduction to standardized work in the five levels, what we understand from Toyota, and that was based on that, that week that we spent um, with Mr. Cato in October last year and what's happened since or what we've done since. You'll notice the title's changed a bit uh, from five levels to five step ups. One of the um, interesting things I find with anything like this is you, I guess, your own understanding of something is a hypothesis in itself. And then the concept of learn by doing is either proves or disproves the, that internal hypothesis. And um, as a consequence of that, you change or adjust. And that is exactly what happened here is that during that week, um, when we were provided that for me, that key to that week was the table that Mr. Cato provided us with these five levels. <clears throat> what I interpreted as the five levels and our discussions in the interpretation, we had an interpreter there. Um, the discussion was around levels. Uh, what I realized through application at a, a winery and a dairy factory, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that towards the end, was that it actually, actually isn't five levels. It was actually five step ups. When I went back and referred, looked at the document more closely that we'd been provided, I realized I'd, when I prepared this webinar and we did the advertising back in November or come up with a name in November, I'd actually misinterpreted that document a little bit. Um, but it, it was a valuable lesson for me um, and I discovered that misinterpretation and my understanding I think has improved through learn by doing. And it is, so it is actually five step ups and that's what I'll be referring to as we talk through. So let's get started. Firstly, let's have a look at the model for standardization, uh, but let's look at it with caution. As those of you who uh, uh, know Mike Rother and are familiar with his discussions or, or presentations, you'll know that he says that models don't change behavior. All models do is help us uh, build a concept in our mind. So let's have a look at this model just to build a concept in our minds, but with caution, um, it doesn't change behavior. It's just building a concept in our minds. So every workplace <clears throat> that we, um, regardless of what it does, whether it be a service or manufacturing, has basic, has work uh, going on. The, the first part of the standardization model is to develop work standards. And the role of a work standard is very simply to show abnormal normal. So for our work, the first concept within the model is to have what we call work standards. And the role of the work standard is quite simply to show normal, abnormal. And then through standardization, which in effect is a PDCA cycle, we problem solve abnormal and we build adherence to work standards. So those two things gray and move into each other. And through PDCA, we, uh, we go through the act of standardization. This is over much time. We go through the act of standardization where we problem solve abnormal that we can identify from our work standards and we build adherence to those work standards. <clears throat> if we do that uh, diligently enough and for long enough, we'll end up with efficient standardized work. An efficient standardized work is where production's at tact. In other words, the pace of production is equals the pace of the orders coming in. The work is sequenced precisely, so we have maximum efficiency of people and machines, and we have just enough uh, whip, just enough work in progress. In other words, we have just enough to keep the line working precisely and smoothly, or the system, whatever it be, 
precisely and smoothly uh, with no excess, nothing left over. So that's the fundamental model for standardised work. Let's have a look at some key definitions uh, that are critical in that model. The first is work standards. Now I've already uh, alluded to <clears throat> a definition of a work standard. And a work standard is, is, from my experience, when I reflect back on the work we've done so far, is usually document, is usually a document, but it does not have to be a document. It could be a, a visual device. It, it, it could be something that's computer-based, uh, most certainly. But it, essentially, a work standard is a foundational thing that allows normal, abnormal, to be very, very easily determined. So a work standard is a foundational thing that allows normal, abnormal, to be very, very easily determined. Definition number one. Definition number two is standardization. Standardization is a verb. It's what we will do along the way to efficient standardized work. So standardization pulls in the various tools of lean that, uh, that we may have, uh, if we've called it that, that we're probably familiar with. So as part of standardization, we may use 5S. We may deploy some aspects of visual workplace, visual devices. Quite likely there'll be some form of Kanban system. <clears throat> there'll be other tools of lean. There'll be certain skills that we will need to pull in, such as the skill of instructing, the skill of leading or getting results through people, and the skill of rapid continuous improvement, the skill of Kaizen. In our TWI world, they're represented by job instruction, job relations, and job methods. But the role, the act of standardization, this PDCA cycle, what we do along the way pulls in the various things we need to get from abnormal, abnormal st our work standards through to efficient standardized work. <clears throat> efficient standardized work then describes the work now as a result of the doing. So it's, um, in this case, the word standardized is an adjective, it describes the work. And the work at the point at which it's efficient, standardized work is where it's happening at the pace required by the customer. <clears throat> In other words, the pull from the customer, it's happening at that pace. It's sequenced optimally to give highest possible productivity, the lowest cost at the required pace and with nothing left over at any point. So a definition for um, work that's efficiently standardized is it happens at the pace required by the customer, their pull. It's sequenced optimally to give highest possible productivity at the required pace, in other words, lowest cost, with nothing left over at any point. So there's some key definitions you might like to take away with you. I guess there's certain status along the way. Now, I'm not clear on the plural of status, so I apologize for that. I was thinking about this as, I practiced this last night and earlier in the week um, that <coughs> I'm not clear on what, the, so there's various points of status along the way. First is, the first point of status is the work itself, where there may well be uh, right at day one, where there'll be a lot of variation uh, occurring. So status point number one, or number two if you like, is where we have our standards are set, abnormal, normal is clear, made clear, but there's no evidence of any standardized work at this point. We haven't got far uh, up that uh, PDCA column, if you like, in developing standardized work. The second, or <clears throat> the third point of status, sorry, is where standardized work is evident. You're starting to see signs of standardized work, but it's not stable. In other words, there's a lot of fluctuation. It's here sometimes, but then we have um, repeated abnormals, repeated instability, so we've got a lot of, fluctuations still in our work, but there is some evidence of standardization. Third point of status, if you like, is where standardized work is evident. So we've got much less fluctuation, much less abnormals, but waste is still present in the work and there's opportunity for genuine um, uh, continuous improvement. And then the fifth point of status is the blue box up the top where we have a very efficient standardized work with, which means production at tact, as I said earlier, work sequenced precisely and just enough width. And an interesting point to note that as there's, as we move up through these points of status, the waste will be, be waste will be being reduced. There's um, from what we understood during that the week at Toyota uh, with Mr. Cato, 
is that it's waste reduction of waste is a byproduct of moving through these points of status, um, doing the five step ups that you're going to see uh, very shortly. <clears throat> so let's have a look at these five points uh, of step up. Um, starting with step up number one. So step up number one is developing our work standards. And as I've already said, um, the, the, the main number one aim of a work standard is to make normal, abnormal, really, really clear. There's three points of work standard, uh, or three, essentially three types, um, as far as understanding is necessary at the moment. The first is a work standard, let's consider a system, uh, uh, an operation. The first is a work standard for the output, the quality <clears throat> of the, the uh, line. For example, the work we're doing is uh, on a, we're experimenting with this is on a cask line. So a work standard for the output quality is the standard for this particular cask with the bag inside, obviously it hasn't in this case. A work standard will describe this particular cask that you see now. <clears throat> and make abnormal normal very clear. Then we have a work standard for the machine or the process that produces the product. So standard settings that if set as per the standard, it'll produce the output. And then we have a work standard involving the people, a standard for setting up the machine to this work standard and operating the machine to the machine work standard. So we start here and work this way, but in effect, then the work standard works back, the work standard work backwards. This is what the people do in setting the machine. Once the machine is set, it produces the output as per the standard. So that sequence of work standards is very important. I'm gonna illustrate that towards the end of this webinar. <clears throat> and important point to note that work standards relating to a machine or person will always have a time component. Um, and this allows, sets the foundation for sequencing towards tact. And this time component will have a standard time to do each element of the work. Once we have that in place, then we then we can do. Once we have these work standards in place, we can determine normal abnormal. We can then do step up two, which is balancing work to tax has started. Uh, work sequencing has started. Those two sort of coincide. Sufficient whip for just in time uh, is develop, being developed. Charts and visual aids will be being used. There is heavy emphasis on training to the work standard. <clears throat> and we're starting to develop a means by which rapid determination of normal abnormal is in place. So that's step up two. Step up three is where we start. Um, uh, so we have a, a means by which rapid determination and alerting of normal abnormal is in place, e.g. an hand on system or a pull, a, some system of alerting, as soon as an operator sees, or a, there is a, uh, a sense, it can be done by a computer, um, as soon as normal abnormal is sensed, there's a means of a rapid, a rapid alerting of that situation. Then we have reoccurrence prevention. In other words, we have a very effective means of determining root cause and, and reducing the risk of root cause <clears throat> to an acceptable level. Um, we have standardization uh, at step up three, we have standardization of incidental tasks. For example, we start standardizing the way we might, we do preventative maintenance on the machines, for example. Uh, and then we start in leveling of the work with consideration to volume and workload changes. So reducing the, um, uh, the up and down that, that can be created by various things, in particular, the, uh, the reality of variation of customer ordering. So we're starting, at step up three, we're starting to see levelling of the work. <clears throat> we could call that gap closing, because essentially we're, we're closing the gap between normal and abnormal. Um, at step up four, we're starting to strive for new levels of performance. In other words, we could call that gap setting. We're getting to the sharp end of standardisation, where we're starting to look at very low cycle up and change over times, and multi-skilling of people, and starting to see genuine continuous improvement. And then step up five, you'll notice the, diet, the slide layout changes a little bit here. In step up five, we have rigorous system of checks and balances, ensuring effective rapid response to abnormal and ensuring genuine continuous improvement. So a key point to, 
illustrate here is that it is a cycle. As you can see here, it is a cycle. We may get an abnormal. We have a uh, an opportunity for continuous improvement, which may take us way back in one part of the process or one part of the operation, one part of the system. That this cycle of uh, that we have going in step up five may take us in the small area of the system or the operation back to step up one, and we then for that small area sequence through step up one, step up two, step up three, step up four. So it's really important to emphasize that um, with if, if I didn't show that cycle there, it might be seen as a linear, uh, 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 achieving efficient standardized work as something that's quite linear. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, done. That's not the case. Step up five gets, involves a rigorous cyclic system of checks and balances assuring effective, effective rapid response and genuine CI, which means we may end up back at step one uh, in a small area and we continually cycle through the whole process. If we do this well, we'll maintain efficient standardised work, which as I said earlier, is production at tact, work is sequenced precisely, and there's just enough whip. Um, and I think an important point to reflect on here, if you see me looking to the side, I've got some notes here to the left, and there's a note here about an important point <coughs> to consider, is that when lean, the word lean, or when the name lean was assigned in the 1980s, as I understand it, it was a it was a reaction to us seeing at the likes of Toyota, in particular Toyota, the, the fruits of this system. So uh, when we, uh, when, when Toyota was studied in the 80s, we saw the fruits of this system, um, these step ups, and uh, we gave it the name lean. I think it's important to realise that what we saw back then was a consequence. Uh, and Mr. Koto provided us with a timeline that he and Mr. Ono went through from starting about 1952, where they started with Step Up One. So what we saw in the 80s was a consequence of what Mr. Ono and Mr. Koto in particular had done uh, in getting through these Step Ups. Uh, in the Toyota system, and we gave it that name, Lean. I think it's really important to recognise that. Um, and they never started with the word Lean in mind. They were they were following this um, pattern, if you like, of efficient standardised work and these five points of step up. Now, the good news: um, some of you, including us, were particularly frightened, I guess, or <coughs> nervous when we when he described this this these step ups to us and this pattern. But then he said something that's I think really, really important. He said, not every organization can and needs to get to step up five, but substantial benefit will be gained by adopting the philosophies of standardized work to take you as far as is needed. That was really refreshing because we'd had a lot of discussion um, around this uh, during our week and that we recognized, including our business, TWI Institute Australia in New Zealand, I think we're probably reasonable, reasonably advanced in step up one and sort of have certain elements of step up two and I guess some elements of step up three. But we as our business certainly operate at this level. We're nowhere near step up four or step up five. <clears throat> and without wanting to create a fence, most of our people that we work with, our clients, most of them are operating at step up one, step up two level, some at step up three, similar to us. So it was it was really refreshing to see hear Mr. Cato say that not every organisation can and needs to get to step up five, but the point he made was substantial benefit will be gained by adopting the philosophies of standardised work to take you as far as is needed um, uh, in this step up pattern or step up sequence. Important point to note. Uh, gave us a lot of encouragement, and um, when I've really started to focus on step up one, I can see what he's uh, in particular, as you'll see, I can see um, certainly what he was referring to there. So let's have a look at step up one in a little bit more detail. Whoops, sorry. As I said earlier, step up one is all about developing work standards and making abnormal normal very clear. Work standards are not a basis for finding fault. Work standards are simply a basis for determining normal abnormal from which uh, effective problem solving can commence. Um, in doing the research for this webinar, uh, outside of what we learned from that week in Japan, 
um, I did notice, a, I did locate, uh, was directed to a quote from John Chook. <coughs> and John, has, and thanks John for this, John stated in this quote that Toyota's Mr. Sayo Kato, the person we spent the week with, has hammered the following point for many, many years. Before you can begin with standardised work, you must clarify your work standards. That really hit home for me. Uh, I know I've made the mistake myself and I've seen a lot of organisations do it. Now I reflect whether they start this journey towards standardised work and the first thing they do is go and write SOPs um, or, or whatever they call is their equivalent. And, and what I realise is, is really, you may argue that's a, that's, that's a um, form of work standard, but I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a step before uh, writing, uh, launching into such documents, and that is simply determining normal abnormal for the output, for the machine and for the people. From that, then you can develop instructional documents like SOPs. So that was quite refreshing to see that. Second thing is this, uh, in discussion with Jim Hunsinger from Lean Frontiers about six weeks ago, about our week in Japan, he directed me to an article written in 1999 called Decoding the DNA of the Toyota Production System. I have that document here um, and I uh, da he emailed me the PDF and I downloaded, went through it. There's a number, you'll see I've highlighted a number of yellows throughout. Um, there's a number of key statements in that that really made a lot of sense to me and I reflected that this the, the stuff, I think what I really liked about the document, it went back to some foundational things and I think in the last 20 years, we might have lost, lost sight of those simple foundational things. One of the things it says is that performing the activity as per the standard tests two hypotheses implicit in the design of our work standards. One is, are we capable of following the work standard, the machine or the person? And the second, if we do follow it, do we create the outcome as expected? So it really hit home to me that our work standards are hypotheses, that if we do this, we'll get this will happen. And that all along we're testing that hypothesis by trying to follow them. When we, when we, when we get an abnormal, it's not a fault. It's an opportunity to do effective problem solving um, and to learn from what, from uh, the the, the uh, uh, incorrect hypothesis, if you like. If you want to access this document, and I strongly suggest you do, uh, this uh, decoding DNA PDF, then please go to our website. The address is there. When you do that, you'll see a, a continuum, a circle. Click on circle uh, dot uh, circle number five. You'll see in the continuum. And then once you've done that, go to the second article down and please download the PDF and see what you think for yourself. <clears throat> All right, we've started, uh, as soon as I came back from Japan, spoke to my business partner, Ben, who's based in Sydney, and we've started work uh, right at step up one in, with, in two organisations, one lo a local winery for me and another a dairy factory for Ben in Sydney. So let me just reflect on the, low, the, the simple point of starting with this local winery. Step up one, this is a cask filling system. Uh, this being a wine cask you see here, part of, uh, an incomplete one obviously. The inners, so this is an inner that you see here. This is an inner. The inners go onto this part of the line uh, and are fed into the former. The former opens them up like this, <clears throat> closes the bottom. Bladders are filled through this part here. The bladder goes inside, uh, is, goes inside of the box, or uh, inside the inner, at this point here. And then the inner and the bladder move through to this part here and the inners are closed and sealed. So fold it over like that, over the bottom are sealed. So now we have a inner coming out with the bladder inside at this end of the system. So first work standard was developed. Here's an Here's the example. <clears throat> Just bear with me while it opens and I'll minimise that. Here's a work standard uh, dis describing the pack. This is a slightly different pack to what you see here, but same concept. So for example, for the element we're looking at is the top and bottom of the inner. We want zero overhang both ends. So it describes the normal and why. So we have a desirable appearance. Bottom of the inner bag position, bag not pushing through the little square hole. That's the normal. Uh, so from this standard, we're able to determine normal, abnormal. 
Then we looked at the machine settings throughout that will produce this normal, you know, if you like, or normal end product. And again, just bear with me while I show you this standard. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It's three or four pages, but working uh, here's the inner closer pressure feet guide rail, for example, the normal near side 175 to 185, the far side 315 to 325. <clears throat> From this standard, we can now term, determine normal, abnormal. The hypothesis is that if we set the machine as per this, this standard that we have here, this work standard, the hypothesis is that will produce um, a normal uh, end product, if you like. So that's a simple illustration of what we're on about with work standards. So where to next? A couple of things. What we'd like you to do, those of it who uh, read, uh, attend this webinar, if you like, or uh, witness this webinar, we'd like you to do a couple of things, please. With respect to standardised work, what aspects would you like to learn more about? So can you please think about that and send your responses to Dwayne at leanfrontiers.com, who is the person who did the introduction, or send it to me, oroach at twyinstitute.com. So just again, if there's something particular you'd like to focus on, because we're going to do a sequence of webinars over 2020 on standardised work, but we want to know, we want a bit of a pool system happening, we'd really like that. What would you like to learn more about? Send your responses please to Dwayne or myself, Oscar. Second thing is, <clears throat> on um, March the 25th, uh, 2 p.m., um, what time is that, Dwayne? 2 p.m. Uh, Indianapolis time on March the 25th. There will be a second a second webinar which will be without titled "Without Work Standards." There will be no standardised work. My understanding is that registrations are open on Lean Frontiers website, and uh, please register for that webinar. That webinar will be focusing very much on expanding on what I showed you here on this page just focusing on work standards and what Ben and I have learned at the winery and the dairy factory with regard to those work standards. And um, an Im important point to make here also uh, is that, is that uh, Mr Cato has entrusted the TWI Institute and our partners with the exclusive rights to extend his program so that in his words, as he said, while we're in Japan, he wants it to be accessible to people outside of Japan. So over the next year, we'll be running trials on a standard for delivery of the material he's provided us, and we'll be updating you as the year progresses. And we believe strongly that this program will provide a unified theory of standardised work in its relationship to TWI and continuous improvement, the Toyota Carta thinking. So there's a couple of points of where to next. Please email Duane or myself and please register for that webinar on March the 25th that will focus very much on step up one uh, work standards. So thank you for your time. I think we're um, bang on time. Uh, six, uh, 6.30 my time, 2.30 your time in, in uh, um, Indianapolis time. So if you have any questions regarding this webinar in particular, please email me directly, um, oroach at twyinstitute.com or uh, come to the summit uh, in Texas uh, next uh, middle of next month and please ask me any questions you may have. And I think, Dwayne, uh, you just would like to do um, some closing out. So thank you for your, everyone for your participation today. Yeah, Oscar, I just wanted to thank you uh, for, for your thought leadership and for, for, for taking that trip over to uh, Japan, <coughs> meeting with Mr. Cato, somebody I've long uh, read about and, and uh, respected greatly. So thanks for bringing some of that wisdom back. Um, as mentioned earlier, you're gonna receive an email shortly from me with a link to the uh, on-demand version of this webinar. So once you get that, please feel free to share that uh, in your organization. Uh, feel free to share that on social media. Um, you spread it wherever you'd like. And just as a final reminder, as Oscar, uh, also reminded, uh, Oscar and I are both going to be in Austin, Texas, February 17th through the 21st for the TWI Summit, which happens Monday, Tuesday, and then the Kata Summit, KataCon, which takes place Thursday, Friday. So you'll not only see uh, Oscar and I there, but a few hundred of uh, uh, your fellow uh, practitioners. 
So please do join us. Uh, you can visit leanfrontiers.com slash skills week. And Oscar, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, uh, we, we host a lot of conferences, but you've actually got one coming up yourself that you're hosting on uh, in, in Australia, right? We have, yeah. So April the 20th to the 22nd, um, TWI and Toyota Carter content, it's in Melbourne. Uh, if you go to our website, um, you'll find, be able to find information or email me directly and, and I can email you, anyone who's viewing on this side of the world, probably best if you email me directly and I can send you a, a link to our registration point for that event and I'd love to see as many as we can of people there and and, and uh, we'll be a three months further down the track and better able to answer some some of your questions regarding standardized work. So that'd be yeah, great to see as many as possible. And thanks, Dwayne, for bringing that up. Yeah, yeah, well, it's certainly impressive. The uh, I looked at a lineup of some of the speakers that you're bringing in, and it is an impressive group uh, from which to learn from. So um, I certainly wish I could be there. Unfortunately, we have our own event that we're running in that same time frame. So uh, may, maybe I'll meet you there in Australia next year. Thank you. So Oscar, thanks, thanks, thanks again. Th thanks again. And uh, thanks to the uh, vast number of you that joined us. Matter of fact, Oscar, I don't know if I told you this, but this ended up being the second largest webinar we've ever held. So uh, this certainly touched on a, uh, a topic of interest. So thanks Excellent. everyone for participating. And we hope to see you in Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm.